and that off and the great one William Hill champion chase and it is magic days the mayor and outsider nudging to the front from gentleman to may in third place the undisputed star two miler in Ergumen, who's followed by Shakan Pursua and Blue Lord as they meet up with their first fence. 11 to jump and stretching on into an early advantage. Magic Days followed by Gentleman de May and third is an Ergumen, keeping company at the back of the field. Shakan Pursua and Blue Lord going uphill to fence number two and it's Magic Days and Rachel Blackmore out in front of Gentleman de May and Mark Walsh. Third is an Ergumen. Paul Townend as they jump that fence. They're followed downhill by Shakan Pursua, Danny Mullins, just a place in front of Blue Lord and Dad of Jacob. Continuing downhill to fences three and four, the first of which is a ditch. Magic Days, spacing out the 500 field, leads Gentleman de May and Nergumen. Shakan Pursua on the inside of Blue Lord. Approaching fence number three, order unchanged. It is Magic Days into it. Pops it cleanly from Gentleman de May and Nergimen. And then Shakan Pursua, the winner of two years ago, Blue Lord, and he's outside. Fence number four, taking them into the back straight. Magic Days, not so far in front. A slight mistake by Nergimen in third. Magic Days, reeled in by Gentleman de May. Third, Nergimen, and then Shakan Pursua and Blue Lord. Turning down the far side to the first of three fences, seven left to jump. Soon at the halfway stage, Magic Days, followed by Gentleman de May and Nergimen, Shakan Pursua and Blue Lord. At fence number five, first of three down the far side, Magic Days from Gentleman de May. And third is Nergimen, then Shakan Pursua and Blue Lord. Order still the same as they go to the middle fence in the back straight. A plane to be followed by their last ditch. Magic Days from Gentleman de May, tracked by Energumen, the predominantly blue colors of the long odds on favor, and then Shakon, Pursua, and Blue Lord. Last fence in the back straight, five from the finish. Magic Days joined by Gentleman de May, a couple of lengths in front of Energumen, then Shakon, Pursua, and Blue Lord as they turn out of the back straight. Four fences left to jump, and the grade one William Hill champion chase. Magic Days. Rachel Blackmore leading out of the back straight. Gentleman de Main, Mark Walsh, poised in third, and Nergiman and Paul Town, and then Shakon Pursua, who's taking closer order on the inside for Danny Mullins, with fifth of the five, four to jump, Blue Lord and Darren Jacob. The field has tightened up with four fences left to jump. Magic Days, the half colors on the inside of Gentleman de May, the white cap. Followed closely in third by Nergiman, then Shakon Pursua and Blue Lord, and Nergiman hit that hard as they head for the third last fence and Magic Days has relinquished the lead at Gentleman de May. On the outside, Energumen followed by Shakon Pursua and although Blue Lord is the back marker very much in with the play as they jump the third last fence, it's Gentleman de May the leader from Energumen on the outside, followed by Shakon Pursua and Blue Lord and falling away is Magic Days. Turning in for the final two fences, Gentleman de May. Stoked in by an argument and Shakon Pursua and Blue Lord as the stable companions straighten up well clear of Magic Days. They've two to jump and an argument strikes the front. From Gentleman de May, Shakon Pursua, Blue Lord trying to deliver a challenge on the outside. On the run of the final fence and the William Hill champion chase an argument with Shakon Pursua coming at the odds on favorite. Then Blue Lord and Gentleman de May, the final fence in Ergumen and Shakon Pursua. There's little between them, 150 yards to go and it's Shakon Pursua battling back on the inside as an argument in a thriller an argument has fought back to each table companion Shakon Pursua third blue lord fourth gentleman to May long way clear of magic days Willie Mullins ran four this year and they finished in the first four. And Ergamin retained his title, but it was actually Shaq and Persua who well, gave him the biggest well, fright. And what a fright it was. Exactly. I thought he had it in the bag when he landed over the last. Um, just Paul said Ergamin wasn't the same horse that he was in Cheltenham. He was just not as lively or in such good form. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to figure out in my own mind what happened, but they went a hell of a pace in front. And I wonder, did the first three just go too fast? and just Enrique class and grit 
got him through grit, I'd say, more than anything else. And obviously Danny and Daryl were sitting in behind trying to just pick up what they could. And you could see the two of them sitting, looking for third place as they turned for home. And next thing, third place looked like it might be a winner. And Danny took his chance and just, um, I suppose, age caught up with him and, and maybe just a class horse with Paul pulling one out of the fire. As I said earlier, you know, the, the difference between a good jockey and a great jockey is a great jockey can pull a race out of the fire. Paul did that in the Irish National, did it again here today, I think. You know, a lot of people would have said if he fell at the last, he was going to be beaten anyhow. You never know. Paul pulled that one out of the fire. The horse did too. Very much so. Paul was also wondering, although the champion chase to some degree fell apart in that Edwardston didn't turn up, yeah. and they're going to put so much into his races, and he wondered whether that might have had an effect as well. I think so. I think he was feeling the effects of Cheltenham. And probably, even though the riders are saying the ground is beautiful, which it is, but I wonder, is he getting more ground dependent as he gets older? Does he need a softer? No, some horses do. Some horse go the other way, but um, yeah, I'm just wondering, is he getting more, you know, does he want wetter ground? And you must be so proud of Shaq and Bessoir because he's proved that there's still a lot of life at the top level in him yet. Yeah, yeah, it's just trying to find races for him, you know, um, that's the problem. But we sort of were in despair and this was probably the last roll of the dice for him. And then he turns in a performance like that. So he's uh, given himself a reprieve for the time being. But I'll have a word with Rich, see what he wants to do, you know. He doesn't know us anything, he's been a great servant. If only all races were in at Punchestown, I suppose, that might help. That's it, yeah. <laughs> in the spring of the year, I think he likes nicer weather, nicer ground at this stage of his career. And your thoughts about Gentleman Demi is that maybe he just did too much? Yeah, because we thought he was really flying. His, he did a lovely bit of work during the week. We thought if Energamine was to be found out, Gentleman Demi might do him from the front. But possibly with magic days in the race, maybe the first two went too fast and maybe then Paul wasn't ever going to let them out of his sight so it might have worked that they all went too fast just it was just an Ergmin's class got him through. And did you feel it was better from Blue Lord after the ride? Yeah yeah it was, Blue Lord has been disappointing but he loves that type of a ride and Daryl just sneaks him into a race and you know he, he was better again as well. Yeah. So lots of positives to take from that? I think so yeah so we probably looking at Blue Lord maybe sticking to two and a half next year, two and a half plus even uh, after that run. But we'll have a chat with connections and see. Well, many congratulations. Thanks again. Cheers. We've heard from the jockeys who were second and third. Time to hear from the winner. And Ergamen has retained his title. Paul Tannen was on board. A few shocks around there, though. He was jumping a little bit scruffily, wasn't he? Yeah, he hit a couple of fences, fair bells, to be honest. And, uh, uncharacteristic of him really you know he made the mistake in Shetland but we were tired at that stage in the Clarence house and uh, he was fantastic in the, the champion so I think it showed how good a horse he actually is to do things not perfectly today and, and win because we know how good Shacken can be on home soil as well I, I know at the time you probably weren't thinking of this but I bet you're really pleased to see Shacken Bassoir running so well yeah look he's, he's a favourite of mine and uh, you know, I'd, when he got a better jump than me at the last, and it, it looked like we were going to come out the worst of it, you know, it, at least it was going to be one of my favourite horses beating me, albeit we weren't going to give it him that easy. But it was brilliant to see him bounce back to his best, and uh, credit to my horse for pulling it out. Definitely, because Shaka Pessoa loves it here, doesn't he? And it sees him to, in his best light, and it does reflect great credit on your horse that he was able to get back up. Without a doubt, um, you know, and... Like, maybe we just had a harder race than we thought in Cheltenham. It was such a good performance, but, you know, he's a very honest horse and he probably puts it in on the bridle, you know. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.